Today's video is sponsored by the Complete Dungeon Game Table by NASA Built. It's time to get rid of those dry erase markers and battle mats. We shouldn't be gaming like it's still the 80s. The Dungeon Game Table allows you to use all of those incredible digital maps that our community's brilliant cartographers have crafted. It is compatible with any VTT that your party is using to bring your campaign to life. Don't worry about moving your miniatures around or rolling dice on the Dungeon Game Table. It is protected by a plexiglass shield. And for those marathon gaming sessions, the dungeon display comes equipped with a charging station that can power up to four tablets or phones, keeping your character sheets alive and well. The dungeon display itself houses an LG UHD 80 series 43 or 50, depending on selection. The TV is sealed off and protected during transportation to ensure its safety and longevity. Click the link in the description below to discover this beautifully crafted, must-have gaming table. And now what you're here for. DM ruined a six-year campaign by turning my character into a trad wife. This campaign was based around the Danmachi anime setting. And for those of you that don't know, in Danmachi, normally you'd get a special perk depending on your performance in the dungeon. Like if you're someone that runs away from monsters a lot, you'd eventually develop a skill named Coward, and it increases your movement speed when, well, you run away from encounters. But here things work differently. You'd get a skill every third level, and its rarity and ability depending on a D100. Of course, the rarer the skill, the stronger it was. They were all created by the DM with no real bias whatsoever. There wasn't even a chart we could read to get an understanding of what we could get, and so for at least us players, it was all random. There was even a chance for us to get no skills at all in a roll. Add a DM who thinks that NPCs should have the same importance as players, and this system was doomed to fail from the start. I played a bard that had a very simple and humble background. She was the daughter of a librarian of a small village, and her reading all the stories there got her inspired and longing to be a legendary hero like the people in her books. At first, everything was going pretty well. The DM was very good at roleplay, and it felt like I was actually talking to someone. But then the first combat with NPCs as our allies came along. They all had special skills which synergized pretty well with them, and with the fact that they all had actual class level and build depth. They were pretty strong. Stronger than us, in fact. And that was the start. After that, the number of allies and even enemies with these unique skills only became more common, killing the entire rarity of these skills. That's not to say any of us didn't get lucky with the skills we rolled, but it was nothing compared to the NPCs. In fact, by the time I reached level 17, I only had one useful and powerful skill, which was to decide to naturally crit with a 20 in any d20, apart from saving throws. But all the rest I had were, like, completely useless. I could create a mundane, very small, and crude item from nothing once per day as a fast action. My hands were plus one, which is completely useless for a bard. I could make a clone of myself, but the drawbacks were so bad I couldn't actually use it. I had to have my total HP, we both shared the same resources, and I had to use a standard action to use it. Considering my hit dice was a d6 and even a d4 sometimes, I didn't have a lot of HP, and one simple AoE spell could have easily killed me. Moving on. In the first half of this campaign, I felt like a secondary character. Remember earlier when I said that you could only get skills every three levels? Well, you could actually get them through advancing the plot of the campaign, which all of my party members got, except for me. They all got super cool and unique abilities. Like, consider this. Our party was a wizard, a paladin, and a hexblade. The paladin got to share his god power, and he had a unique bond with him and a unique sword. He was his avatar, his champion. The Hexblade was the prince of all the Xenos, which is a race of intelligent monsters that live in the dungeon, and could resurrect dead people as Xenos, had cool shadow powers, and could make himself ethereal. The wizard got blessed by entities from beyond this world. He could predict the future by reading the stars. He also could have access to knowledge checks only he could do, homebrew overpowered spells, and we discovered that his family was actually the protectors of the material plane of all of the DM's campaigns. He could also create a safe bubble between planes, which gave us time to heal ourselves in peace during battle. So, what amazing things did I get from my background? An NPC from my hometown, which later became my husband. Yeah, the NPC was strong and all, but everyone got an actual ability which their character gets to use and shape the story. Where I got the aid of an NPC, which wasn't like a dragon or some powerful entity. No, no. Just your ordinary rogue, with a unique skill, whereas I wanted to feel unique. I wanted to feel powerful, like the others. But nonetheless, this never happened. 
It only got worse. So much, in fact, that my bard got nicknamed Living to Hit Bonus by the other players. Of course, I talked to the DM about it, how I felt frustrated that NPCs were stronger and felt more important than me, the issue about the skill system that he invented, and the fact that I didn't get any kind of special skills, but nothing could get through to his head. The only thing that really changed, I guess, was the number of future NPCs with unique skills, but it didn't really make a difference. I endured all of it, because I had fun role-playing. Even though the fights sucked ass, they were all super lethal, like we could die from a simple random encounter, and our DM didn't give us magic items, which in 3.5 are super important. At the end of the first half of the campaign, in one of the major arcs of the story, my bard made a speech before the fight with the big bad, so good that my DM rewarded me and my allies with a giant morale bonus to hit and damage. Like, it was plus 10, and my bardic inspiration at the time only gave a plus 4, which was already pretty huge in 3.5. But just right before the start of the fight, this non-magical buff got dispelled by the big bad, and I felt bad. Like, really, really bad. For the first time in the campaign, I felt rewarded by my efforts, and it had no impact at all. Later, the DM explained to me that, thanks to my buff, the Big Bad's Dispel couldn't remove our other buffs. But that doesn't mean anything to me. Like, what the hell? Why couldn't you just let me have this one thing? And so, that was the end of the first half. We saved an important town from the Big Bad at the time, and everyone got a happy epilogue. But my bard wasn't renowned at all for being an outstanding adventurer. No, in her epilogue, the DM explained that she became a famous musician instead. I felt frustrated, but I knew that it wasn't the end of the story, because the DM had a second season planned, and he assured me that he had big plans for my character. Fast forward a couple months, and this second season starts with new characters. But we'll skip this and we'll fast forward again by two whole real-life years. The only thing of importance was that our old party was sealed in time in the deepest part of the dungeon. Eventually, the new party saved the old one, and we got to play both of them sometimes. I discovered that my character got pregnant, which is something I told the DM that I didn't want with my husband. At least the fetus is under an enchantment that protects it from harm, so I could fight normally as I always did. I, of course, didn't like this at all. Forced pregnancy is disgusting. But the way the DM made me discover it created an emotional scene which all the other players liked, and so I thought to myself that maybe it was all part of the big plans that the DM had. So I endured this too, and I lied to him that I liked his idea at the end of the session, even though he said, I was worried you wouldn't have liked it. I was prepared to try to convince you. But it felt bad to turn him down at the time. I didn't want to ruin his plans or ruin the scene that he had created. For the rest of the second half of the campaign, everyone eventually got an upgraded version of their past unique skill, where I didn't get shit. Except the pregnancy. And now I'm convinced that the pregnancy was the big plan after all. The wizard even got to turn all of the world back in time to save us from a total party kill. Throughout the campaign, the DM always hyped us with bites of lore about the black one-eyed dragon, which is the only living dragon in this setting and the strongest opponent that we could ever encounter. Eventually, we were down to the last sessions, and I finally discovered the meaning behind my pregnancy. Apparently, my character is blessed or something by the overgod of this setting, and the child I'm carrying is super important. This blessing made it so that we successfully skipped an unbalanced boss fight in which the boss acknowledged to me as the Chosen One and let us go meet the Black One-Eyed Dragon, which for plot reasons, we have to defeat or we doom the world. So this was our real final fight, and we only had one chance. The DM gives a long intro before rolling for initiative to the boss fight, and right at the end tells us to roll a reflex saving throw to defend ourselves against the Black Dragon Breath Attack. My character doesn't pass the DC, and I get 40 d6 worth of damage to my face, which quickly drops me to 30 HP. Then the DM asks if anyone is below half their hit points after this attack, and I have to roll for a fortitude saving throw. I roll a natural 1, and the DM asks me to roll a 1 d6. 1 meaning instant death by decapitation. 2 to 5, I lose a random limb, or 6, nothing happens. I also roll a 1, and die. Not even during the fight, but right at the intro. We didn't even roll initiative. It simply just happened. I got so frustrated and angry about the fact that I lost the chance to fight the final boss, the true villain of this six-year-long campaign that got hyped since the start of it, that I just left the Discord call and told them to continue without me, because I'm not going to watch it anyway. In the end, the blessing that I had gotten from the Overgod didn't mean shit during this fight, where I thought I was super important. I was the chosen one. But no, I just died in a pathetic way. Not even a cool description came with it. I just died. 
They even won this fight without me. I wasn't needed at all. The DM didn't even try to bullshit some deus ex machina just to make me fight it for at least one round. Like, I really wouldn't have minded dying during the fight if I at least got the chance to do something, to have a lasting impact to the fight. But no, nothing at all. Off roll, the party told me they could use a limited wish mid-fight to try to resurrect me. But that is such a bad action to do. It's a waste of an action in a fight where this dragon can one-shot people. Because what the hell do I do after I get resurrected? In 3.5, a caster that is resurrected has a 50% chance to lose any given spell, and I get back into the fight with 17 hit points, and a negative level. So not only would I have probably died again, but there's a big chance that I couldn't do anything. Because what the hell does a caster do without a spell slot? So, I just told them not to do that because I wanted them to win and not waste the spell on me. At the end of the fight, the party tried to resurrect me, and I just told them no. No, I didn't want to continue. I didn't want to know the purpose of what this pregnancy was, what the hell was my blessing anyway. I didn't want to do anything at all anymore with this awful campaign, or see how it ends, and so that's where I quit. I talked to the DM afterwards, told them again all of my complaints, of all the things I didn't like, how I felt like a secondary character, how I felt that every NPC was stronger and just overall better than me. He explained to me that the big plans after all was just a secret ending. Some of you would think, well, that means a lot, right? I mean, it's a secret ending that only thanks to me we get to have. But what the hell am I supposed to do with an epilogue? If I wanted to read a book, I wouldn't have played this campaign. Everyone got to shape the story during the campaign the way they wanted to, thanks to their overpowered abilities, why I only got to watch. I wanted to feel powerful. I wanted my character to feel like the thing she always wanted to be, a legendary hero. But instead, all I got was the footstool of the party, the living to hit bonus, and a forced pregnancy. I'm mostly just disappointed. I had so much faith in my DM, in my campaign. I felt like my character was an actual living being, and right now, I just feel so bad that I wasted six years of my life on this. I feel like we should make shirts to say, I finished a six-year campaign and all I got was this baby. What a complete failure on the DM's part. How narrow-minded and simple to think that the only meaningful contribution or plot device a female character can have is get pregnant. Here's some advice. Treat female characters exactly like male characters. It's really that simple. Tell me what you think in a comment down below. Before we take our leave, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, All Things D&D. Stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content every week.